Hi everyone! Here's another watercolor tutorial. This one's about an owl. These are the colors I use to paint the owl, and these are the brushes that I use to paint the owl. Please notice the rake brushes in the center. They're also called wisp flat brushes or granier brushes. The first thing that we're doing is we're just going to quickly sketch out our owl. Now I know that this is always kind of a time consuming step, but I'm going to just speed through this a little bit here. The nice thing about the owl is it's actually not too complicated. With the face, there's a little bit of complication there, but we just have the beak, a couple of eyes, and then we have some feather direction that I like to just add in. Uh, other than that, you know, there's no legs to worry about. So all in all, the pencil sketch isn't terrible for this one. Um, but I do like to add probably a bit more detail than I need to here. But the most important thing are the eyes, the iris, uh, the beak, a little bit of the direction of the feathers on the face. Now that my pencil drawing is done, I'm taking a kneadable eraser and I'm rolling it over and that lightens up my pencil so I can start painting and I don't have to worry about those pencil lines staying in my artwork. So right now I'm just diluting a mid-tone brown. Uh, it's kind of a lightish mid-tone brown. I'd say it's a little bit heavier in the yellows. I'm using a number 10 flat brush, or sorry, round brush to just kind of dab in some base tones. And you can see that I'm, I'm making sure that I stroke in the direction of the feathers on the owl. Um, I'm leaving some white areas for, for those white feathers and for the highlights. And I'm just kind of dabbing in my darks and my mid-tones here. And one of the wonderful things that you can do with a nice large round brush like this is you can actually add in some really interesting texture for the feathers. Uh, so when we get down into the body and even just a little bit up here, I'm gonna be using the belly of the brush in a dabbing motion to just create those nice little feathers. Uh, right now I'm just using the very tip of the brush to kind of tell my story on the top. Those feathers are a little bit more detailed, a little bit softer and a little bit smaller. But when we get into the body, you'll see how the, the nice belly of the brush can give us just really beautiful feather patterns. So here I am, I'm just dabbing, I'm filling my brush up and I'm dabbing it, always pointing the head down. Uh, that way where the head is kind of picking up, it leaves with the largest amount of water. I just had to pick up a little bit of paint there with my, uh, with my paper towel. Now here is that brush that I was showing you. It's a wonderful brush and it's really good for feather texture. So you can see that if you do a dry brush technique, like right now, there's not too much paint on here. The paint underneath is mostly dry. Uh, so we're going to be getting a really nice, clean kind of feathery look, almost like hair rather than a feather. And I can just kind of feather this in. Or my hands in the way here a little bit. Now I have quite a bit of water on my brush now. I still want to have a little bit of that texture, pulling it up into that Payne's gray area with my light brown. Um, but I don't need it quite as much, so I loaded my brush up a little bit more there. Just basically layering in a tone that I'm then, you know, later down the road, I'm going to add a little bit of that texture in there. Back to doing some dry brush work here. Here, now I'm zoomed in so you can really see how that brush works. You just want to always think about every stroke as being a feather, being a small grouping of feathers. This is more kind of wet brush painting. I'm just zooming through this because my hand kind of got in the way here. Um, I'm doing a little bit of tapping for shorter um, feather looks. The feathers at the top of the head are... We're kind of seeing them, you know, they're more foreshortened because they're going backwards. So we don't really see that much of them. So they're a little shorter up there. And just kind of building my textures, building my tones. But then what a nice, soft, little wispy, wispy stroke that is to give that texture. Look at that. Wonderful brush. This is actually my second time using it. I used it with acrylic paint um, and then I decided to give it a try with watercolor and I think it works better for watercolor. If I'm being honest, it really was nice to use. It's a lot of detail work. This painting involves a lot of layering, at least the way that I approached it. Um, kind of building up these, these 
lighter tones and then we're gonna get darker and darker with it. Even with the blacks, this is just kind of a lighter layer of the blacks and we'll eventually go in heavier to just call all of that out. But right now we're making our map Uh, here we have a wet brush. We're just using a wet brush to kind of call out a little bit of the shadow on the side of the face there. And I should note that this is going to be a black background. So you're going to see that I'm getting a little sloppy around the edges. And I'm doing that because the, the black background or the Payne's Gray background is going to absorb all of this. And especially right now using the Payne's Gray and pulling it in, that's just going to give me a nice softness around the outer edge so that the subject matter transitions nicely into the background. So there's no real hard aggressive edge there. Um, and that's what I'm looking for. So that's why I'm getting a bit sloppy around that outside side edge. Now I'm using the edge of my um, my rake brush to get a little bit of a different stroke here. So sometimes you'll see I twist it and I kind of pull it and it gives me very fine hairs. Other times I use the full uh, body of the brush and it gives me a lot of fine hairs. So it's a you can do a lot of different stuff with this brush. Now I'm taking it into the body. Again just adding in some texture kind of building out. We haven't really touched the body with the texture yet. We have our underpainting, so we've established some feather patterns now, and it's just, uh, we're just gonna kind of build on what we already have in there. Now, I didn't necessarily look at the reference for every single one of these feathers. I kind of felt around and did my dabbing and, and put them where I thought they needed to be while preserving that white space in the middle. So you don't need to be perfect with your reference as long as you're inspired by it and you follow kind of the rules. Um, that, that your reference is presenting to you, that you should be fine. So I'm just adding in that texture on top of some of those dabs that I did. So the dab will become kind of the, the base tone and then this will become the tone that sits on top of it, um, building up our darks here. The owl itself is quite dark, so we have a lot of ways to go here, long ways to go. So th what I'm doing right now is just pulling a few little feathers into the face now, right around the beak. It's very um, long kind of feathers are coming in around the beak. So I can use this rake brush with just a little bit of paint and, and water on it to pull those out really nicely. I'm just softening it. I'm actually adding a little bit of red here. So I had a reddish brown um, and I've pulled that into my brown just to get a little bit more of a red tone because I'm feeling like the brown I'm using is just a little too on the yellow side. So I'm pulling some red in and I actually think it's doing a wonderful job of making the color feel more natural. Um, so I'm going, to, I'm going to pull this in throughout the body. I'm kind of thinking of the brown maybe as more of a highlighty color and then the red brown that I'm just now mixing is maybe a bit more of a mid-tone and then of course the paint's gray and even some blue in the white uh, areas is going to act as our shadow. So I'm kind of, kind of breaking it down like that in my mind. So now it's time for me to apply that red tone into the body, again using that fan brush to get that beautiful texture that we're looking for or sorry, not fan brush, the rake brush. Um, a fan brush would probably work. It does have those really nice separate bristles. You can get some beautiful textures with a fan brush. The issue I have is that I don't have as much control as I do with this new uh, rake brush that I bought or the greener brush. Um, it's referred to as a whole bunch of things. You can really see the, uh, the red tones pulling forward now. But we have to keep in mind that we're going to be layering in a lot of paints gray to this area as well. So the most prominent color in the body is probably going to still be the paints gray and the, and the brown, but that red is going to help kind of bring everything together. Here I am using the side of the brush. Look how I can just get a few little lines if I use the side. And then as I twist over, I get that full kind of feathered look. So the versatility of this brush is really, really nice. Here I am again, just getting a few really nice fine lines in there, uh, just at the, on the brow. And then I'll be able to kind of twist my brush to get a little bit of a fuller, fuller shadow in there at the top there. So really nice, really nice versatility. And sorry about the hand covering up in there. It's tricky because you don't want to put your hand on your artwork, right? So just pulling out some little wisps in here working on those nose feathers. Now the, the feathers are actually, a lot of them are going to come over the nose. So that's a challenge for another part of the video, but I don't want to go overboard in that area quite yet because the nose still needs to go in and uh, 
but we do want to just establish a little bit of that texture. So now I'm going in nice and strong with my Payne's Gray into the body and you can see I'm twisting my brush to get different kind of strokes, different angles. Um, so I'm able to get some nice kind of crisp smaller areas and then I open up the brush and I'm able to get that fuller uh, feathery feel. I'm just getting in right to the side. I don't even care that I'm going off into the edge of the page because that's all going to be covered up. I just want to make sure that the edge of the bird feels as soft as everything else. I don't want to put a hard line there. Uh, when I'm adding in my grays, I, wanna, I want to definitely kind of have those feathery strokes lead me from my bird into my background. So here I'm using this, the side to get a nice crisp line and then down again with the crisp line. So you can really see how versatile this brush is here um, just, just with these feathers in the body. Just twisting it and all the different textures we're able to get. So this is going to take a little while, but basically I'm just going to be building on what's already there. So that base that I put in, in our very first watercolor step is still the base to the painting. And I'm just kind of building out around that now with my dark. So I think I'll speed this up a little bit here for you. Now I've actually lost my nose drawing when I added in those little textured hairs. So I'm just adding it back in. I like to have an, an idea of where I'm putting everything and the nose is a pretty important part of the face. So I didn't want to put that in the wrong spot by accident. Uh, so I'm just quickly adding that back in before I jump in with the rest of this texture. Here we go again with that black texture. So I'm just gonna speed this up again because I think you guys have seen a decent amount of it and I don't wanna make the video too long. And here I'll zoom in a little bit more uh, and slow back down again so you guys can see how that brush is creating those textures and how I'm able to angle it differently to get different looks, right? So I'm making the feathers feel nice and soft, nice and fluffy, almost have a hair-like quality. And then when I brush at an angle, I can get those kind of longer, more controlled lines as well. So nice and versatile. With the feathers, it's okay to be just a little messy here, right? Because the feathers aren't perfect. Um, you know, feathers are a bit disheveled, all that stuff. So as I said, we'd be coming back into the head here to add some darks. Now this isn't the last layer of dark, but we're building our dark. So we're just adding a little bit more by just tapping that rake brush uh, to, the, to the head. I love detail in painting, so I tend to get, get up in there and do a lot of detail work. Whereas I know a lot of artists would rather just kind of probably take this on as a wet on wet and, and do it a little bit quicker. Um, all in all, this painting took me just over an hour to do. Uh, I've, I've shortened parts of it for the video for you and um, to make it a little bit more manageable to watch. Uh, but in real time, without speeding up anything, it took about maybe an hour and 15 minutes. So now I'm mixing a blue color. This is actually really important. We don't want our shadows to just be the Payne's Gray. There's actually some beautiful blue tones in the shadows. So we're calling that out by mixing blue in with the Payne's Gray. The blue itself is a very potent blue. It's very aggressive. Um, so I felt the need to, uh, to kind of dilute it a little bit with the gray to help it blend in. It'll play a very important role in the beak when we get into the highlight of the beak, but also just in the highlights and shadows of the, of the white parts of the face. Um, you don't want to leave those just pure white. You still want to add in texture with that with that rake brush. So just a teeny bit of diluted uh, diluted Payne's gray and blue mixed together. It makes for a really nice soft um, tone for your for your colors. Now I'm getting back in here with the red. Um, and I'm going to be adding even more. So at one point I thought maybe I had too much red in the body, but now that I've added in the Payne's Gray, I can see that I can actually have a lot more of it. And the more I add, the more I like it. So I'm, I'm probably going a little bit more red than the image, but that's totally fine. I mean, as an artist, you have that creative liberty, right? So it's kind of the beauty of painting an image instead of taking a photograph. You can make those calls and it's... It's all up to you, right? So just going a little bit more in there with that red, with that, again, with that rake brush. I think I use this brush for half the painting at least. I get into the detail brush quite a bit at the end, but for most of the painting, I'm using that nice rake brush. Adding those textures in, nice soft shadows. 
getting back in with my red now. So kind of jump in between the red and the paints gray to build out the values. Darken the feathers a little bit, but give them a lot of, a lot of uh, depth. All right, now we're jumping into the eyeball. So I'm first applying just a little bit of water to the eyeball area, and then I'm going to start to add my yellows and just a little tiny bit of orange. But I want this to be nice and wet before I apply that uh, because I want those colors to kind of blend into each other really nicely. So here's a nice, beautiful, bright uh, yellow color. I noticed that the Paul Rubin colors seem to be a little bit more pigmented than some of my other paints. Um, so a little goes a long way. And I just put the smallest amount on my brush and look at that yellow, it's very, very vibrant. Uh, so I'm just adding just a bit more water here to, to cut it a little bit. Um, yeah, but it's beautiful, beautiful color paint. Picking up a little bit of highlight with a clean brush there. And now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So just add that water in first. And then when the eye is nice and wet, I'll dab in some yellow. Now there is a little bit of an additional highlight on this particular side, right around the edge. Uh, it's almost white. Um, so I'm not gonna go straight to the edge with this one. I'm gonna try to keep the color a little bit more focused in the middle. Now I'm just adding that orange. Now my yellow is still wet, so this should move. Um, it's not moving as much as I would expect it to, so that might be the brand of paint that I'm using. Um, or it could be that my page is just not quite wet enough. Um, so I'm just gonna take a little bit more off here, just gently tapping uh, a little bit of orange in. I'm switching to a smaller brush here um, because I, I am having a little bit of difficulty getting these to feel nice and nice and small. Adding a lot more water here to get the get the, the yellow to flow into the orange. Again, trying to add some water, pick up a bit of that paint here. Just to get that to blend better. But it's wet, so it's all still it's all still movable, so we're able to do it. And now we're just adding a little bit of detail using the uh, triple zero round brush. So I'm getting a little bit darker around the edges. Um, on the right eye, we have quite uh, an aggressive shadow um, happening underneath the brow and because of the beak. Uh, so I'll be adding even some Payne's gray into that eye. But right now I'm just kind of dabbing in that to yellow, sorry, the orange to get a little bit of texture and also create a little bit of the round feel of the eye by creating a darker area. So here I have a little bit of that Payne's Gray and I'm just taking a nice clean brush and pulling it into the eye um, to create that nice natural shadow. It really is quite dark in there. It's hard to go dark in an area like that. It just feels so aggressive, but it's the right thing to do. So you just gotta be brave and do it. Okay, now I'm still adding in those details here. So you can see I'm getting a little bit of that orange in and around the eye. Help it pop a little bit, soften it because we don't want that line to be really hard. We want it to feel nice and rounded. Just fussing with my little details as I do. Just dotting in some more little details. They're really small brush strokes. They're just little stipples basically, but they do help to make the eye feel a little bit more realistic. So I, I think they're important, even though they're small. And now I'm going in around the eye. There's a very dark kind of rim that goes right around the eye. Your eye needs to be 100% dry before you add this in. Uh, and I'm just using my number three round brush. And then I'm adding just a hint of texture here. You can see I'm kind of feathering the outside edge so that I don't get just a really sharp line. Adding in a little bit of that shadow. Again, this is quite an aggressive shadow area here. I'm gonna be going in with our darks later. A lot of, a lot of darks in this. But just kind of making it so that that feels a little bit more natural in there. There we go, you can really see the, the shadow starting to take form too. The eye feels a lot more intense now. 
And it's time to add the pupil. I always hold my breath when I add a pupil. I don't know why. I think it, for some reason, I think it'll help me make a better circle, but I don't think it actually does. Now you want to preserve a little bit of your highlight. So you can see my highlight is just white now, but that actually feels really, really aggressive. So I'm going to add just a little bit of really diluted paints gray with a bit of blue in it to the eye to make the highlight feel a little more realistic. And it's okay that the wet of the, um, the highlight touched it, the paints gray because um, a little bit of that bled in, but that actually helps it to look more realistic. So I'm totally fine with that. Yeah, this painting definitely has a personality. There we go. I'm just trying to perfect my little circle. Always, uh, always kind of get stuck on those, wanting my circles to be so perfect for the pupils. Adding in some more nice, deep shadows with that detail brush. Almost scribbling them in, just kind of loosely dropping them in there trying to make it feel organic. Now the, the downside of using the rake brush is that the brush strokes tend to be a little bit too organized, I guess. Um, so when you go over top of it at the end with your detail brush, you're able to pull a bit, bit of personality in there and make them feel a bit more organic. Um, so I'll be doing that periodically as we go. So now I'm moving over to the other eye. This one doesn't have that same white rim that you saw on the other eye, so the, the black kind of border goes right against the orange. I lost my focus a little bit here. There we go. The black gets more narrow towards the tear duct, so a little bit bigger on the outside. And this one didn't seem as feathered, but there still is a little bit of texture coming off of it. So I'm just going to add just a hint of it and get into that brow and get some more aggressive lines. Yeah. Get a little bit of a shadow there. Perfect. Yeah, I'm just trying to soften that, that line around the eye so it doesn't feel as, as aggressive. Now this pupil is actually kind of an oval shape. Um, the other one very well could be as well, but we're just not seeing it in its entirety. But this one, the angle we're looking at it, it seems oval. And we have two really distinct highlights, so I'm going to call both of those out. And uh, the, they already have a yellow base, so they're not going to be pure white. So I'll just probably leave those as is. Fill in everything else with my Payne's Gray. There we go. The intensity on those eyes is pretty, pretty impressive. And then adding in the darkness to the brow just makes it feel even more, even more so. And just using that small detail brush now to kind of add in little details going into the, I guess, I guess it would be a tear duct, whatever's going on in that part of the eye there. And then the feathers moving out from the eye. Um, very important to look at the direction in which those feathers are going. Some of them are going down towards the cheek and then others actually go towards the beak. So right around the, the eye, like where the tear duct area is on the eye, you see the feathers start to go in different directions. So you just have to really pay attention to that when you're painting any kind of animal, I guess, or bird. always adding in details. You can see the hairs going in the different directions coming out from that edge of the eye. Um, and again, you just really need to pay attention to that stuff to help it look realistic. Going back in to fill that shadow area a little bit with my blue gray that I had. The blue gray is going to contrast really nicely with the uh, with the yellow of the eye, and the orange. Those two colors together usually kind of pop off the page. So we're going to get a little bit more intensity out of these already intense eyes by adding in that blue shadow there. And there we are, getting back down into those beak feathers. So I'm using my triple zero round again. And a, a 
fine brush like this can still give you a relatively thick line if you push down nice and hard. So where I want to fill in more space here, I'm just pushing down and letting the belly of the brush touch. And then where I don't want thick lines, I'm just using the tip so you can get a little bit of variety out of your brush here. So the beak again is very, uh, very dark with a, with a highlight on it. And you don't want to quite paint the whole thing because then you wouldn't see those hairs sitting on top of it. So I added those hairs before and now I'm kind of trying to incorporate them into the beak by painting around them and using them uh, to inspire that texture that's in the beak and under, under the feathers basically. Kind of painting around some of those details. Just with that really, really fine brush. Now I'm just cleaning a little bit of the inside of the beak here. I added some water. You can see I'm lifting some paint um, off of here now. So I went a little bit too, uh, too hard with my detail on those hairs. I had to lift a bit out and now I'm adding in some of that blue. Um, and again, that's gonna really help to work with the eyes to create a little bit of contrast, a little bit of moodiness, but it is going to act as a highlight um, because the paint gray is so deep. So as long as that paint gray is really, really deep, that blue should pop very much like a highlight. You wanna get them to have a nice blend Working on all those feathers around the beak now becomes a little bit easier because we know where the beak is and we can kind of see why the feathers are doing what they're doing. Now I went a little bit too aggressive again with my texture up here so I need to lift some paint so just gently I took my brush with clean water and I wet down my paint area and now I'm dabbing it with a paper towel so this will work if your paper is a good quality paper and your paint is good paint you should be able to do this at least a little bit you can see there's still some paint in there but I've mostly lifted it and there's a little highlight area on the bridge of the nose there that I that I accidentally painted over so we're just going to be adding that back in now And get that Payne's Gray, the deepness of the Payne's Gray going through the beak. There we go. Now that highlight's really popping. Contrast is really important. If you have two similar values, you're not going to see a great deal of highlight or shadow, but contrasting values will give you a nice kind of shiny looking beak. And even though the blue is actually quite dark, it's the Payne's Gray is so much darker that it makes the blue seem very light. And now just going in behind that little crest that was on the nose there with some feathers of course it isn't perfectly clean there there's feathers going over it too so it can't be too too bright and then just kind of tapping the feathers in behind in behind the feathers are kind of coming straight at you so we aren't seeing so much feather as we are value so you just kind of tap those in a little bit there also I think it's a little bit of a different textured feather right above the beak not long like some of the other feathers are I went a little bit too deep with my blue, I think, so I'm dialing it back just a little bit. Same thing, I just add a little bit of clean water, wet down where I want to lift, and then just lightly press. You don't want to rub with your paper towel, just press and you can pull a little bit of your highlight color back. So you can lift a little bit of your paint that way. If you do it too much, you will wreck your page, but if you're only doing it every now and then and you're really careful, you should be fine, fine to pull those colors back out more and more of that texture so I'm using this brush instead of the rake brush because the feathers in this part of the face are not consistent they're not all going in the same direction like they are in the body or the head they really are just each feather is doing its own thing each little hair is doing its own thing so it makes sense to do it all with a detail brush um, and I'm not looking at the reference exactly I'm just kind of using it for inspiration at this point and I can see you know these kind of go this way these kind of go this way and I'm just kind of leaning into that a little bit but the face is starting to feel much more finished. And once those eyes and the beak is done, like I just feel like the painting 
goes from being, you know, 20% done to all of a sudden being like 80% done just, just with those two little things, right? So you can see it already, you know, on the white background looks pretty, pretty good. So now it's time to add in our background. I'm doing a wet uh, on wet background. So I've added water to the entire page, including just the outside edge of the owl. And now I'm adding in some Payne's Gray. I started with a small brush uh, and I've now moved into a much larger brush so I can get better coverage. Um, I can see that with what's happening on my paper, the water is not actually pulling my Payne's Gray to give me a smooth, um, a smooth color. So what I'm going to do instead of fighting this and kind of going over and over and over, I'm just going to lean into it a little bit here and I'm going to embrace the texture. Uh, so I'm not going to worry too much about these brush strokes. I'm just going to try to maintain a wet page at this point. And what I'm going to do now is just take my rake brush and feather into the owl. So I'm taking those the Payne's Gray and I'm kind of pulling it right into the first layer of feathers there. And that should give me a nice transition between the owl and the background. So it'll make the owl feel like it's sitting in that space. It'll make the feathers feel like they are fluffy. They are flowing freely into that space um, instead of it feeling like a hard outline. Like if an apple, let's say, were sitting on there. Uh, uh, the owl is textured, the owl is feathered, the owl has you know air between those feathers so we should be able to see a little bit of that background starting to pull through around the outer edges and now that i'm done that or at least have done a little bit of that i'm going to start to add in that texture with my large number 10 round so i'm just building up my paints gray on the brush and pattern here so the the dabs are just going around you can see it building around as it goes um i i I think this is going to look nice. I think it'll look kind of like if you were to add salt um, to your page, it'll give it a little bit of that kind of texture. And I've always, I've always liked that, adds a little bit of interest to the painting. And all of these dabs are kind of painting, they're pointing down towards the owl, which is also going to help pull our eye in towards the owl in this particular situation. So I think that that can work nicely here. Um, I accidentally grabbed just a smidge of brown at the bottom, which warmed up my paint's gray, but that's fine. Now I'm pulling with that big brush. I'm just doing some additional pulls in. These are going to be a bit too aggressive, I think, but I just want to try to soften what's happening around the edge. There we go. So now it's time to add in the, that uh, blue gray into the white in the belly. Um, the painting is getting to be pretty close to being finished. Everything at this point is just adding texture, leaning into your shadows, um, because the, the structure's done, the look and feel are kind of done, um, but now we just need to build build out here. So this is just adding texture. I've sped up the video because uh, I've actually shown you this quite a bit. So I'm just using that rake brush to go ahead and dab in some texture. Um, every now and then I'll switch back to that smaller brush to do some lines instead of the rake brush. But uh, yeah, with that smaller brush, you can get in a little bit more aggressive shadows. So you'll see me take it down now into the body where I've just taken the rake brush to add those darker textures and just kind of add some areas that are really, really dark. And these will act as the deep feather, the deep shadows or the really black parts of the feathers. And with our really dark background, having these, these dark areas are going to help um, have the, the let, let the bird feel like it's in that space and here you know everything's so even on the top so you can see how just adding a few little dark dabs in the feathers on the face is going to be really helpful just just adding that little bit of contrast makes it feel makes everything pop makes it feel a bit more real and I mentioned I'd be coming back into here and I am again so just adding yet another layer of Payne's Gray this time tapping it in with that detail brush for that final layer so that it doesn't feel so perfectly unified as the rake brush does give you a very unified looking tap. Um, just gives me a little bit more control because I can, I can put a highlight here and not there and, or sorry, a shadow um, to give it a little bit of, a little bit more of a realistic look. 
just touching up some details. This is something I do. I get through a painting and then I could probably walk away and then I spend another half hour just fussing with details. So that's all I'm doing now is just going back in, deepening up some things that I've already painted. Now that the background's in, I have a better idea of the level of contrast I need within my owl. So I'm just going a little bit harder on some of these shadow areas. And now I'm adding in a little bit of that red that we were adding earlier. Again, just trying to deepen that color, make it a little bit more rich. Um, and I think the red is going to work really, really nicely with the Payne's Gray that I've just added in. I'm doing mostly a wet on dry at this point. All of my details are wet on dry. So the wet on wet part of the painting was rather short with this particular subject. And it's been a lot of dry um, brush texture or you know wet on dry kind of paint application but not too much wet on wet here and that makes it feel a little bit more like drawing to me and a little bit less like watercolor painting and i was i learned to draw before i learned to paint i was never really properly taught how to paint but i was taught how to draw when i went to college so um, i think i kind of lean that way when i do my watercolor which probably makes them a little bit longer but gives it gives it a style that's for sure again just fussing with those details a bit adding in a little bit more of those shadows really deep panes gray there and the, some of those feathers just separating them i think i'll just speed up a little bit here because i've been doing this kind of a step for so long for you Now I'm just zooming in a little bit here, slowed back down a little bit, so you can see how I'm adding in with that with that uh, tiny little brush. I'm actually using the belly of the brush in a lot of these situations um, to get a little bit of a thicker shadow, and then just the tip at the end to get some nice feathered feelings coming out of it. Now I'm zooming back out, but I'm just doing that over and over again where needed. So just look at your reference uh, of your whatever it is that you're painting and see where you need those kind of more controlled shadows. And I'm still just kind of fussing with these feathers. I could do this forever, but I'll uh, finish it up pretty quick here. Just a few little spots in the face, I think, that need a bit more attention. The body's pretty much done now. Um, yeah, forgot a few little dark areas here, right above the brow, just adding those in. And yeah, let me see. I think we're, I think we're looking done here. So here's my cute, little bit judgy owl, but I love that. I love the intensity of the eyes. See that highlight on the beak really popping here. And there it is with those paint brushes I talked about and my color palette that I used. Those paint brushes, the important ones, again, is the grainier brush or sometimes called the rake brush or the wisp flat brush. Those brushes give you that really nice feather texture. You can see two of them here with those bristles just kind of uh, getting fewer and fewer as they get closer to the end, giving you that feather texture. The detail brush also playing a very large role in the feathers, just making them feel a bit more realistic. Thanks so much, guys. If you want to send me any work, um, if you do this painting, you can find me on Facebook or on Instagram at uh, Creations by Kendra. And uh, please like and subscribe. I just hit a thousand uh, subscribers, which is a really exciting milestone for me. So I'm going to keep the videos coming and I hope you guys keep coming too. Thanks so much, guys. Happy painting.